In this video, I'll tell you what I'd do if I was starting or getting back into tabletop wargaming in 2024. There's a lot of options, but I have my favorites. This channel's purpose is to help get people into the wargaming and miniatures hobby. New wargamers, uh, lapsed wargamers, I want to give all of you the information and insight you need to get into a hobby which, I'll admit, can be a little daunting to start sometimes, if you don't have the proper information. The following things are what I'd be doing if I was just starting now in 2024, with the benefit of knowledge that I've gained over the last 20 years, of course. I'm going to split up uh, this whole thing into like four categories, 3D print, non-3D print, Warhammer, and non-Warhammer. So we'll start with 3D printing. Now, this doesn't mean that you'd have to own a 3D printer. This isn't a, you know, like how-to about getting into 3D printing for wargaming. I am not the person that you should ask about that, believe me. Instead, this section will just be about 3D printed miniatures and like where to get them and things like that. If you have a friend that likes 3D printing and likes being paid to print stuff for you, then the wargaming world is really your oyster. I talked about the freedom that 3D printing brings to Warhammer here. Pachow. There are millions of 3D printer files out there in the wargaming world. The files that you need for 3D printing are called STL files. They're sculpted by someone, usually on a computer, using software. Sometimes the sculptor works in the physical world, you know, with putty and clay and stuff like that, and then uses this expensive machine, this 3D scanner, to scan the thing that they sculpted and turn it into an STL file. They do that so that they don't have to ship things all over the world and they can, you know, scan their creation and then they can, you know, allow people to buy it all over the planet without any shipping involved at all. It's all, you know, internet. But most of them are actually designed and, and created in a computer. Either way, the STL file is the thing that you need if you're going to 3D print the item, the miniature, the piece of terrain, whatever, yourself. Or have, like I said, a 3D printing friend do it for you. Depending on size, multiple STL files can be printed on a printer at once. So where do you get these STL files? Well, usually you get them online. Many sculptors will sell their STL files that they make directly through their own website. Or maybe they'll have like a Patreon, right? And then the people who support them, you know, then get all the new STLs that the sculptor makes every month, for example, whatever. There are also online marketplaces that sell STL files from thousands of different sculptors. Some of these files can even be free, you know? Um, there's places like Thingiverse, which is generally mostly free, I'm pretty sure, and uh, Cults 3D, which is kind of a mix of, you know, free and paid content. But those places, you know, aren't just all about minis. Then there's My Mini Factory, which is all about miniatures. It's kind of right there in the name. In my opinion, My Mini Factory is the best marketplace to find STLs for wargaming. Models, upgrade parts for your models, terrain, you name it, all the like biggest 3D sculptors kind of hawk their wares over at My Mini Factory. Some stuff is free, but most files have a cost. Honestly, as they should. This allows these sculptors to do this, this sculpting, uh, you know, as part of their job or maybe even their ent entire job and then just keep creating all kinds of files for you to get printed and then paint and enjoy. The cost is usually pretty reasonable and then you can, of course, print yourself as many uh, copies of the models uh, as you want. Relatively recently, there's a newer company that's kind of attached to slash owned by My Mini Factory, a company called Only Games. They sell printed 3D models from My Mini Factory. Now, understand, I don't think every model that's available on My Mini Factory is also available to purchase printed through Only Games, but a lot of them are. So if you don't have a 3D printer and you don't have a friend with a 3D printer, but you love this specific model that you found on My Mini Factory, check on Only Games and they'll probably print it for you and, and, and send it to you. That's what I did recently with these Knuckle Bones miniatures. A quick note here, because I know people will ask, there are no official Games Workshop STL files. If you see 
a model on one of these sites I mentioned that looks exactly like a Warhammer model, like a current for sale Warhammer model or even an old one, whatever, then it's most likely an illegal scan and you shouldn't download and print that file. Files like that are committing intellectual property theft. And say what you will about piracy and massive corporations and all that, but as a creator myself, I'm completely against that kind of thing. Also, there's tons of models out there that aren't pirated scans, but will still work just fine for your GW games. For the most part, 3D printing is the way I personally would start in 2024. Again, I would probably work with someone else to do the printing, but the absolutely amazing amount of choice that's available and the fact that the models, even when you factor in the STL cost and like the printing resin cost and all that kind of stuff, they are wildly cheaper than the models on offer from the biggest companies in the industry, like Games Workshop, for example. All that makes it a great way to start. And as you're like learning painting, being able to print the same models repeatedly for learning to paint is a great plan. But what if you wanted to stay away from 3D printing? Maybe you just don't want to go down that road and you'd rather stick with, you know, like the traditional materials for your miniatures. Then there are still a ton of companies that make great kits that you can build and paint for whatever kind of games that you'll be getting into. I've talked about some of these before, but I'll hit them again quickly so that you can use the links down below in the description and go to, you know, check them out. These are all pretty much miniatures that aren't attached to a specific game, so you can use them with whatever you'd like. One of my favorite miniatures companies these days is a company called Wargames Atlantic, who make amazing plastic model kits for nearly every era and genre you might be interested in. Fantasy stuff like Lizardmen and Halflings and Skeletons and, and more. Sci-fi stuff like Colonial Marines, Alien Bugs, Prison Troopers, and, and, and more. Uh, and even historical models like Ancient Fighters and stuff like that, all the way up to like World War I and World War II soldiers. They're all hard plastic, modular, and posable kits that you can build however you'd like. Plus, they're really inexpensive. Usually you get 24 to 30 models per $35 box. Then there's other companies out there that also make models that I love. Uh, Anvil Industry, which I've talked about before, Pachow. Uh, they make great modular models out of resin instead of plastic, and they mostly focus on sci-fi with like a little bit of other stuff thrown into the mix. They have a lot of models that would work really well as proxies for the more popular games out there right now. Then there's also Frostgrave and Stargrave minis from North Star Military Figures. They're made for, you know, those two games, Frostgrave and Stargrave, but you can use them in any kind of game that you like fantasy, sci-fi, whatever. I talked about them recently as well. Pachow. There's tons of other companies out there making miniatures in traditional materials as well. Just uh, do a Google for things like fantasy miniatures or sci-fi miniatures, and you'll find so many options. I'll be honest, most friendly local game stores don't stock these kinds of miniatures that I just mentioned, as shelf space is pretty precious and you got to put the stuff in there that sells a whole bunch. However, you might be able to order some of these things, uh, you know, through your local shop to help support them. If your shop can't order them or perhaps won't order them for some reason, then you can get them online. So that's miniatures, but what about the games that you play with these miniatures? Well, I want you to understand that there are, again, thousands of game systems out there. Most of them don't have associated miniatures, you know, attached to them, but some do. If you want to find great Wargaming rule sets online, I'd tell you to start at Wargames Vault. You can find just about every kind of Wargaming rule set there. Sci-fi, uh, fantasy, historical, skirmish scale, army scale, even Wargaming rule sets licensed from video games. There's tons. But what's the one system I'd tell you to look at to start? One Page Rules is probably your smartest move. They make Grimdark Future and Grimdark Future Firefight, which are sci-fi games, army scale and skirmish scale, respectively. They also make uh, Age of Fantasy and Age of Fantasy Skirmish, which are, again, army scale and skirmish scale, respectively. Obviously, you know, fantasy stuff, too. They even make um, uh, Age of Fantasy Regiments now, it, you know, if you like more kind of rank and flank, you know, type games. All of these games only cost five bucks each, and once you've bought one... All the updates and the new versions and stuff that they make going forward basically from then on 
are included and you get them for free. You can use whatever models you'd like with the One Page Rules games. And they are kind of designed to work well with Warhammer models if those are the models that you already have or, you know, if those are what you want to be using. That said, they also make tons of 3D print files for their games, so you can use those as well if you'd like. I personally love a lot of their sculpts, and you can get a bunch of them also through only games, you know, printing service that I mentioned later if you don't have access to a 3D printer or, you know, a friend with one. One Page Rules is getting bigger and bigger, and you're finding more and more events for it and people playing it. Also, it's not as like bloated and overcomplicated for specifically beginners to understand, yet it still has strategic depth to the gameplay. There's tons of factions to choose from, whether you enjoy sci-fi or fantasy, and they have arguably the best army building website in the entire industry. When you're done building your force through their, their army building website, you get a great, easy to read sheet that not only has all of your unit stats on it, but also has descriptions of all of your unit's special abilities so you don't have to go back and constantly reference the book. Lastly, if I was getting into Wargaming today in 2024 and I decided that I had to get into Warhammer and Games Workshop related stuff, what would I do? I would probably start small and I'd try to get into Warcry. Currently, there's a Crypt of Blood starter set available from Games Workshop for Warcry, 110 bucks, which will technically get you enough to play small games of Warcry with two players. It's got a little bit of terrain too, and a, a mat and the rules and everything that you pretty much need. It's a pretty decent starting place in the Warhammer universe, and frankly, Warcry is probably the best rule set that Games Workshop currently makes, in my opinion, and in other people's opinions as well. However, if I decided that I had to start with Warhammer 40,000, right, Games Workshop's most popular game, well, then I'd start with Combat Patrol. For 160 bucks, you get a force uh, of models, and there's a lot of different ones to choose from. And then, you know, you build it and you paint it, and then you download the free rules and the free army info and with all the stats and the unit information and all that kind of stuff, and you are ready to go. You're playing the actual 40k rules, not some sort of limited sort of starter version of the rules. The Combat Patrol unit stats are a bit different than the regular 40k unit stats, but otherwise you're playing the same game. If you prefer fantasy and Warcry, you know, isn't enough to scratch that itch, then Age of Sigmar is what you're probably looking for. That said, there's not a combat patrol equivalent in Age of Sigmar yet. The new edition of Age of Sigmar, 4th edition, will be coming out this summer. Probably, right? Like, there's a slim chance they might not release it this summer, but they're generally on a three-year cycle, and this summer is three years since the launch of 3rd edition Age of Sigmar, and, you know, you do the math. So, but, you know, if they don't then turn those like $140 Vanguard boxes that they currently have for Age of Sigmar, if they don't turn those into basically combat patrols for Age of Sigmar, then I think they're kind of dumb. So my point is, wait till this summer. One additional note. I've just told you about miniatures, both 3D printed and traditional, and Warhammer and non-Warhammer game systems. That covers everything, doesn't it? It does not, actually. Uh, if you're getting into the hobby today, then you probably also need paints and tools and all that other stuff as well so that you can turn these models, you know, glue them together and, and, and actually make them something. Luckily, I already made that video last year about how to get from zero to Wargamer for less than a hundred bucks. Pachow. And that'd be the best place to start to figure out what you need for paints and glues and tools and whatnot for cheap. There you are. Those are ways I'd start today in 2024 if I was starting from scratch or maybe coming back from a long time away from the hobby. I gave you many options depending on what you like and ways you like to play. Personally, for me, like I said, it'd be all 3D printed craziness and indie games like Space Weirdos and Forbidden Psalm, but it would also be Grimdark Future Firefight as well. That's of their games, that's the sweet spot for me. So what did I miss? What's your advice for people getting into wargaming in 2024? Let me know in the comments down below and share this video with people wondering about getting into the hobby.
If you liked this video and more content like this, then hit the like button down below. It's free, and I think you also get little fireworks or something like that. Let me know what you got. Also, it helps this video in the algorithm to be shown to more potential new wargamers, and we all want more wargamers in the hobby. Also, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this one every single Friday, and thanks for watching.